How do you measure the speed of light using a microwave oven? Well, today I'm going to show you how using a beautiful piece of basic physics, some food and of course a microwave oven. Microwaves are part of the electromagnetic spectrum. In front of you now, you see this family of waves. These waves are special because they can travel through a vacuum and they're transverse. Microwaves are specifically used in an oven because they agitate molecules in the food and therefore make the food hotter. The manufacturer of this oven has actually written the frequency down for us. It's 2000 450 megahertz. That means it vibrates 2450 million times per second. And this is the right frequency to agitate the food. So we're going to use this value in our experiment. For this, you can use marshmallows or you can use chocolate spread. The microwave oven produces the microwaves and the microwaves run across the food. They reflect and interfere with each other and produce a pattern of hot spots and cold spots. You can use the distance between two hot spots or two cold spots to work out what half the wavelength of the wave is. And if you multiply that distance by two, bump, you get the wavelength shown here. I'm going to talk a bit about what exactly is going on. So the interference pattern formed in a microwave is, is due to standing waves. Here, coming from the waveguide, which is the region that pushes the microwaves into the oven, you have a wave. It reflects off the metallic surface and interferes with another incoming wave. The principle of superposition means that you have an area which has maximum displacement called an antinode and an area with no displacement called a node. This happens all over the place and you get a fixed pattern of hotspots and cold spots, antinodes and nodes. In this animation here from Walter Fenn DE, and it's an amazing animation, go to the website, have a play with it, all credit to the person who made it, you see an incident wave coming towards a boundary. Now, that incident wave is going to reflect off the boundary, have a change of phase, and then interfere. The reflected wave is going to interfere with the incoming wave. So there you have it. From the, the principle of superposition, at the nodes, you have destructive interference, so these places that write N. And at the anti-nodes, you have constructive interference, so you have a massive displacement creating hot spots in your food. So here you have maximum agitation of the food molecules that I was talking about. So there you have it. This is how a standing wave forms. And this is what's actually going on in your microwave ovens when you heat up the food. So you get regions of hot spots and regions of cold spots. And in this experiment, we want to look at the hot spots. The distance between two hot spots is actually half a wavelength. So if you can identify the hot spots, you can measure the wavelength of the microwave therefore measure the speed of light. Microwave ovens have turntables in them and this is to reduce the effect of these hot spots only occurring in certain places. So in goes your food, close the door, start the microwave oven and you see that the food rotates. So this 3D pattern of standing waves that's inside this oven is always there and the food rotates around it. Therefore, you get more even heating.
In this experiment to measure the speed of the microwaves, you need to bypass this rotating mechanism because we want a pattern of where the hotspots actually are. So the way that we actually did it is that we took off the tray, covered the rotating motor with a glass or a cup and placed a piece of cardboard on top of the cup. You could also use a box of the right size or a piece of plastic of the right size, as long as it doesn't contain any metal because that's dangerous. Enter the students. So as you can see, some used marshmallows, some used chocolate spreads, but what they all did was made an even layer so that we could have a fair test. So with an even layer, in theory, you can see where the hot spots are and where the cold spots are. Now, this is a preliminary experiment that we did. As you can see, there are areas that have melted, which obviously means that there is a hot spot there. There are also areas that have not melted, so that must be a cold spot. You can see it even clearer with the chocolate spreads. The bits that actually were in the hot spots burn, and they are so obvious. The problem was it, this was difficult to measure because you can't really place your ruler on a bunch of melted food. So what we decided to do was sandwich the food between two pieces of paper. And you can see here one of the experimental results. By the way, don't heat it up for too long. We only used 20 seconds for our experiment. And here you can see that there are two really obvious hotspots. Here you have an example of what you have to do. Take the two closest hotspots you can find and measure the distance between them. And if you do that, you have the two antinodes of the standing wave, which means you can work out the wavelength of the wave. Because like we said before, the distance between two antinodes is half a wavelength. So multiply that by two and you get the wavelength of the wave. Wavelength of the wave is that distance times two. So here are our results. Six, ten, six, 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 seven, six, five. Ten has to be excluded. It must be an outlier. And if you take the mean is six centimeters. We didn't feel confident enough to express it to more than one significant figure, one to the nearest centimeter. So the wavelength was 12 centimeters and the half range is the biggest value, seven, minus the smallest value, five, divided by two. So it is actually six centimeters plus or minus one centimeter. Here comes the piece of physics. Now, this is an amazing equation. It's the wave equation based on basic principles. And the speed of a wave is the wavelength in meters times the frequency in hertz. Using the wave equation, wave speed is wavelength times frequency. We have Our wavelength, 12 centimeters, 0.12 meters, times our frequency, 2,450 million hertz, equaling 2.94 times 10 to the eighth, rounded to one significant figure is three times 10 to the eighth. Fantastic. We've actually agreed with the accepted value for the speed of light in a vacuum. Do you remember the uncertainty? Our measurement between the antinodes was six centimeters, and that was plus or minus one centimeters, the half range. It gives us an uncertainty of 17%. But hey, never mind, we had fun.
I'd like to take this opportunity to thank 6C for being amazing experimenters. And if you like this video, subscribe and like AstroKate. Many thanks again, 6C. Bye.